Today we'll take a look at how to create a bearing load in a rotated part. We'll begin by creating a new PRT file. Next we'll create some geometry. And I'm going to create it in a coordinate system that's been rotated. So here I'll rotate my work coordinate system and I'll create a block that will be relative to that work coordinate system. Next I'll create a hole, which is where we'll be applying our bearing load. And we'll create our simulation files. We'll also create a linear static solution. Now we'll create a mesh on the part. And since I didn't assign a material to the geometry in the master PRT file, here I'll assign a material in the mesh collector. Now we'll go to the sim where we'll assign our constraints and our loads. First we'll create a constraint where we'll fix the translations on one of the faces. Now it created this in the subcase. I don't want that in the subcase. It did that because it was active. If I had deactivated the subcase it would have created it as a global constraint which is what I want. So I'll just drag it over to be a global constraint and remove it from the subcase. Next we'll create our bearing load and to do that first we need to specify a work coordinate system in a specified direction that will specify the direction of our bearing load. And we'll do that by orienting it with a z-axis, x-axis, and origin point. So here first for our origin point, the reason why we can't select any geometry at this point is because the scope is within work part only in our selection bar. So let's change that to entire assembly. Then we can select our origin as the center of our hole. Our z-axis will select the face of the hole. That will select an axis right down the center of the hole. And then an x-axis that can be along the edge of the part or in any direction that we'd like. So now we have our WCS on our hole. And we can use that to specify a direction for our bearing load. So here I'll select the XC axis of our work coordinate system. And we'll specify a magnitude and you can see it creates the bearing load. Now next we'd like to create another subcase that will have a bearing load but in a different direction. So here I've created another subcase. We can now rotate our work coordinate system and create a new bearing load that will reference the new XC direction of our work coordinate system. So here I'll put in a two pound load for our second subcase. All right, so now we're ready to solve and you can see this one takes about a second to run and we can view our results. First we'll take a look at displacements for our first subcase. And then also for displacements for our second subcase. And we can of course animate those results as well. Thank you.